Hey guys, my name is Ali Al Karguli. I'm a NASA postdoctoral fellow, and in this video, I'm gonna show you uh, why you don't really understand physics, or maybe you do. But something that I've noticed a lot in a lot of students, whether they study engineering or whether they study physics or any type of science major, or even just everyday normal people, uh, is not enough people understand physics or how physics works. Uh, and I have two equations over here, V equals IR and F equals MA. Now this is very typical in electrical engineering courses when you're learning circuits. Uh, this is very typical in mechanical engineering uh, where you're learning about motion and, and forces and things that, are, that interact on each other, especially in the macro world. Uh, and I'm going to show you why I actually don't think these are written properly. And because a lot of people learn these equations in this form, uh, they never really get to fully understand how physics operates. And they don't even understand these equations are actually very, very similar. And that is because the biggest problem in physics or in physics education is the way it is taught by a lot of teachers and professors is just that. It's a bunch of equations, you plug in a bunch of numbers, and you solve for it. So for example, you're told that V equals IR. So if you have R missing, oh, all you gotta do is just find out what V and I are, solve for them, and then you figure out what I are. Or in this case, you know that like voltage equals, I don't know, I times R current times resistance. You just gotta figure out what the current and the resistance is, and you just plug it in and you get a voltage, right? And then everyone can, kind of moves on. But like why, or like how is this actually happening? Uh, this is something that I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you right now. So before I go and I explain um, V equals IR in terms of an equation, I actually would not write it as V equals IR. Um, I, in my opinion, this is the wrong way to look at it. And that's because if you've studied math or if you've taken any basic um, calculus or any type of uh, uh, class, you know that generally speaking, when you're writing things as a function, like let's say F of X equals some stuff, multiplied by x, for example, or like something pertaining to x, you know that this is the cause and this is the effect, right? So some weird behavior in x causes this function or causes some, something, something to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite the equation with this in mind. So instead of v equals ir, the way really this should be written is i equals V over R. This is the proper way to read this equation. And now you might be wondering, well, Ali, dude, you just rearranged a bunch of letters and how, how is this any different? These are mathematically the exact same thing. I'm gonna explain to you why these are different because here it's not just about the math or about solving for something. This is about understanding why this equation actually happens the way or, or, or works the way it works. So I'm gonna give you an example. Suppose we have like a ball that is rolling on some type of floor. And suddenly, there's a little ramp here, something that goes down, and then there's another floor over here, right? So someone's like, and then there's like some dude uh, who's like using his hands to push this thing. This is my impression of a dude. Sorry for my not very great drawing skills. And this guy, I don't know why he has so many arms. He's pushing this ball, and soon enough, this ball is gonna come here, and it's gonna come here, and then it's gonna start rolling, and then it's gonna keep rolling, right? Well, why does that happen? Well, because if you understand gravity, you know that over here, the difference between here and here, this creates some type of potential energy, and the only thing that's stopping it is the floor, and the moment this floor becomes slanted or tilted, then the ball starts rolling, and how fast it rolls depends on multiple things, but one of th those things, for example, is the friction of this material over here, um, which you could also think of as the resistance of the floor, right? And as a result, this happens. So what we know is that this guy is pushing the ball and it's about to fall over here. And because he's pushing it and because there's not enough resistance, like let's say this thing is, is, is slanted and the material is not too, fr like it doesn't have too much friction, it's gonna start rolling. Now, you may think of this as F equals MA, right? Well. But that's not really what's happening. What's happening is actually the acceleration, the ball starts accelerating as a result of F over M. Some force is being applied, and let's say in this case, like the mass of, 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 of the object or like any other type of resistance, uh, it, it's, not, it's not strong enough. And as a result, acceleration starts happening, right? If this mass is like really, really big, and if this guy is like unable to push it, in, the, in this case, we're, we're looking at F equals MA here then 
it's 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 um it's if, if this ball is really really heavy this guy's unable to do it and likewise if over here this thing was instead of being very slanted let's say it was still flat and very and has a lot of friction uh it's not going to happen now this is the exact same scenario that happens with v equals ir right so again what is v equals ir or again the way i'm going to rewrite it is i equals v over r it is the exact same concept in that you have some type of poten electric potential. So instead of a gravitational potential or like, like uh, you, have, you have an electric potential. And as a result of this electric potential, and depending on how much resistance exists over here, the current is either going to start flowing or not. Obviously here I'm using a bit of an analogy. But the idea is that this is how you should read it because the current is what happens as a byproduct of some voltage being applied and that voltage gets slowed down by the resistance. Just like how in motion, the reason things move or stand still is because of, again, I'm gonna rewrite it here, which is A is F over M. Some force is being applied and there is some mass that's like stopping it or, or like the bigger the mass, the, the more force you need. And as a result, motion happens. So just like how current is the flow of charges in the electrical circuit, in this case, the acceleration is the, is, the, is the motion, is something starting to move. And this is really the way to understand it. Now, if you understand why this makes sense, you understand cause and effect. And you understand a very, very important concept in, in physics, which, that, which is in our observable world, at least on, on macro scale or in classical mechanics, classical electromagnetics, uh, things happen because something caused it to happen. Right. If I'm able, if I if I were to take this, um, I don't know, chalkboard eraser right now, and throw it across the room, assuming I have a very good understanding of how I'm going to throw it, the amount of force applied, the direction in which that force is applied, and I, I have very good understanding of the dynamics of the the, the resistance that's going to happen. For example, the drag uh, or the air resistance or the friction that's happening as a result. If I have all of that answered and figured out, then I can predict perfectly and exactly where it's going to land, right? And that's why, for example, at NASA, when we're able to uh, launch satellites to uh, very far away planets, we're able to use things called gravity assists. We're, because we're able, because in space, things are much more predictable than they are here, um, do, like, because there's, there's no wind, there's no air, there's no like, very turbulent um, uh, conditions. In space, things are like relatively stable, at least from a mechanical macro perspective. Uh, you can predict that if I launch a satellite or if I launch a spacecraft in this direction, at this time, at this place, with all these other objects that are pulling on it gravitationally, I'm gonna know exactly what's gonna happen, right? And then I can design my forces in a way that allows me to control my motion in a certain way, right? Because at the end of the day, a force is just something that's either pulling or push, uh, pushing or pulling onto something. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use this example again to circle back to this idea of V equals IR. Because again, this is something that really breaks my heart. So if we have like a very basic circuit with a resistor and that's it, and let's say I have some voltage over here, let's say this is like nine volts or one volt or whatnot, uh, and then I have a resistor here, let's say like 5K ohms. Only when I have these two variables, am I able to actually figure out how much current is gonna flow. Why? Because if this resistor was tiny, this, this battery or this voltage source is gonna pump out as much current as it possibly can before it gets drained. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start throwing around a bunch of current. And then if this thing was really, really massively large, like I don't know, millions of ohms or whatnot, then this guy, no matter how hard it works, it's not, it's not gonna be able to push out that much current simply because the system has so much resistance. So again, I'm gonna redraw this equation, which is not V equals IR, it's I equals V over R. I'm, 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 comp I'm trying to solve for this effect. So then I look at the causes and the cause is usually that there's some type of voltage that's being applied or electrical pressure. And this voltage is being slowed down or controlled by this resistance. Only when I know these two variables am I able to actually uh, control for current or am I actually able to solve for the current. So when you get a question on your homework or on your exam that's like telling you to solve for a resistance, like it will tell you what the current is, like I equals something, uh, I don't know, like let's say three milliamps. And then it's gonna erase the, 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 the resistance 
and it's going to ask you what the resistance is. It is very important that you understand conceptually that you're, you, you, you are guessing what this resistance is or you're trying to calculate it based on the current because the, there's, like, the resistance is already there and the current is trying to, and the current only happens as a byproduct of the resistor there. It is not the current that's causing the resistance to be that much. But rather, you're just calculating how much resistance is. Now, again, for some people, uh, this may be a very obvious thing, but for a lot of people, I, I simply find this, this idea to be uh, new or surprising, or people don't think about it that way. And again, equations that are so simple, such as something that's just like V equals IR or F, e F equals MA, uh, because they're written in a way that is, is simple, uh, they're actually not as intuitive when you think about cause and effect. And the way, the way it's written like this, hopefully should drill that point home for you. Anyway, if you thought this video was valuable, um, you can leave a like and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Peace, love.